Ram and Stellantis, even Jeep, seem to be leading the truck market crash. I mean, when you look at trucks, we've got li trucks lined up for days and more trucks lined up for days here yet. We've got vehicles like this little unit. We have 1500 Hemi E-Torque right there. And there's currently a recall on those, by the way. We have this GT. We have a Sport here, Ram 4x4. We have definitely all kinds of different trucks here. Oh, slide my way through there. E Hemi E-Torques there. And we have a whole host of other trucks. Some classics, some more basic pickup trucks. And there's no shortage of trucks around. You know, and I've been browsing here a little bit on my phone looking at for some of the deals. And you know what, even some of the local dealers are cranking prices down. It shows like they're actually starting to make some move. But when I browse some of the lots, I go to over the Ford lot, they have less trucks. They have a lot less to choose from in the F-150s. And even when I go to the GM, well, GM has a lot of inventory as well, but it feels like Ram has a lot more. And why could that be? I mean, let's go take a look at some pricing. There's some one ton pickup trucks up there, diesel. Oh, and what do we have here? A compass. And a compass here with a sticker of $47,260. Clearly, even though it's a Jeep, it's still Stellantis. And clearly it's more of an operational thing. It's more of a business model thing. So right here we have a Bighorn. This is obviously a 3500 we got a dually it's a huge truck this thing's immense of course we got the big extra crew here this one has the cummins and it actually is a 3500 hd so this is the real workhorse truck here this is the biggest baby that you can gonna get for without going full commercial truck yeah they have the great ram decals on there and it's a great looking unit i mean if you want the biggest nastiest truck to pull your fifth wheel this is it this is going to haul the biggest nastiest weights and loads so it should come with a bit of a price tag. Let's take a look how much this vehicle actually costs. Let's go. Monroney sticker on here. And this truck here is $105,000. 105 grand right there. If you can see it, $105,000 on the sticker for this. And here's another one. And right here we have $105,000. Seems like the common theme here. You've got to pay over six figures to get into a new diesel pickup truck here. And oh boy, here's another one, $117,000 $117, for this unit. Here, this is a Ram 3500 Laramie Crew Cab Night Edition 4x4. So you get the Night Edition 4x4 Crew Cab, but it doesn't even have any of the extras. So you know when you're buying these things, you gotta dress them up. And this one's not a dually either, by the way. So by the time you put the running boards, you put some extra mud guards, otherwise you're gonna ruin the paint. But $117,000 for it looks like a three quarter ton, essentially night edition or a one ton single rear wheel drive. And so the theme goes on and on here. We've seen trucks all over the place. And we're also seeing lots of Jeeps here too. As you cycle down, we see all kinds of Saharas. There's lineups of Jeeps to go for days. All sorts of Wranglers, this color, that color, blue, greens, greens, black. We got silvers, we've got all kinds of Rubicons and the like. There's all sorts of Jeeps around here to pick from. They're not selling, that's the thing. This feels like it's pretty much a crisis. Now, last time I filmed this video, or it was probably a few weeks back, this Jeep was still here, right? And that Jeep was there. So we know these Jeeps are not selling. So it's clearly an indication. Jeeps, that was like a month ago when I filmed that. So 30 days already. Now we also know that a lot of these vehicles, the Rams, the Jeeps, they tend to be some of the worst offenders in terms of sitting on the lot. So the the time that it lands off the truck to the time that it actually gets to the sales to the persons that the owners the new owners hands should be the average is around that 72 days but unfortunately what we're finding with a lot of jeep products and ram vehicles is it's not 72 days it's closer to 130 140 days and clearly they're just not selling but why and why aren't they actually adjusting their prices so they can sell well let's take a look at this is a half ton here we have a 1500 this is a Hemi E-Torque, Ram, of course, barely base bones otherwise. You've got some chrome wheels on there. And of course, they even put the mag locks, which is a good idea around here. Because anybody who knows this area knows that anything's pot potentially susceptible. But here, $78,000 for a Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew by crew Cab 4x4. So $80,000 for a half ton. That's absolutely bananas. Now, when I pull out my phone here and I actually start going through looking at some of the options available, I'm actually able to see that it's some local dealerships are actually starting to adjust, but they're putting the adjustments on the internet, right? So what you're seeing is price, you know, regular MSRP, 
$85,000. Then you see a slash mark and you see it's cut down to $6,000 less, so down for $79,000. Well, that's all well and good, except for the simple fact that that's electronic, it's digital, and they can change that any time. So that feels like to me what's wrong with this whole system is that this brand just doesn't get it. They don't realize what they're in front of. Now, I don't I don't see the books, I don't know where they're at, but I can tell you when I walk around and I look at the, the car lot here, I know for a fact they're not selling most of these vehicles, these Jeeps, these oversized Jeeps, these oversized trucks, they're just not selling. How about some of their big SUVs? How much are those going for? Well, the beauty is about a year ago, we didn't see these, these lots were almost empty, but now they're quite full. And obviously we have a whole raft of different Jeeps. Here we have obviously a bunch of Grand Cherokees and we have some Grand Cherokees here as well as we have some Wagoneers down here. Let's check in the price. Let's take a look over here. We have a Grand Cherokee right here and this is an Overland 4x4 and they're asking $89,210. Wow, that's huge money. Okay, that's great. What about over here? Well, we have a bigger SUV here. This is the Wagoneer. How much is this one going for? Well, let's take a look at this and let's see. Here's a Monroney telling us $107,000 for this. $107,000. Wow. Like, what can you say? Obviously, it's no wonder all these Jeeps are sitting like this. Here, how about this one here? Let's take another look. Well, got to duck down. And $129,000, folks. $129,000. Grand Wagoneer L Series 2. Of course, yeah, it has a whole pile of different features. Yeah, there's lots of different options on here. They have a lot of great things on here. Oh, they even give you a full tank of gas. How do you like that? Anyway, they add all that up. And then, of course, add in a few extras. Front passenger interactive display. 22 by 9 inch fully painted satin carbon aluminum wheels. Beautiful. Of course, federal green levy of $1,000. You got to love taxes. And then, of course, a green... What else do we have? Federal AC excise tax of $100 and $1,000 for embossed metal interior accents. So $1,000 for some embossing. And that's $129,000 for this. And that does not come cheap. $129,000. 130 grand. And you haven't even put any accessories in that thing yet. I can't imagine out the door for that vehicle is going to be probably in that 140, 150,000. By the time you pay your GST, probably luxury tax on there, you have to put in some of the extra floor mats. Maybe you feel like extended warranty. You're out the door, $150,000 on that. How about another one over here is a wagon here, not the Grand. And let's see what the Grand, what the wagon here looks like. Here's a sticker on this one. So again, $103,000. So what we're seeing is the Wagoneers are about 100, and, 100 to 105,000, maybe 110, and the Grand Wagoneers are up around that 130, buck 30 and more. Clearly, I mean, are these vehicles worth it? I'm not here to debate that. I mean, that's why, you know, different strokes for different folks, but a lot of these vehicles would be much more palatable if they weren't so much money. Well, look, we even have a little bit of used inventory here. We got a, I don't know what we got there, a Hemi 1500. We have another unit here, 1500. And, and there's a Ram Unlimited. And of course, a 15 E-Torque right there. A lot of great choices here. You can buy new, used. There's lots of inventory. So here's some more used inventory, slightly used. Probably has a few miles. Like as you can see, they've gone and put extra wheels on there. And clearly, oh, let's take a look at this. This always catches the eye. I wonder who drove this. I mean, look, we have, look at the big wheels on here and such a cute piece. Any ideas, any thoughts, any comments on this Jeep right here? This is the reason. This vehicle is the very reason why Jeep Wranglers are so much money because they're popular for young people that think with their hearts and not with their minds. And even though it's a bit of a, you know, it's one of those specific vehicles that has a real cult following, that's why they're charging what they're charging because people are buying them both new and used and it seems to be they can sell just about anything and get a decent dollar for it so i don't know like to hear your thoughts on that one birds are out the sun's shining and they're loving it so i'm going to explain the kind of what i think is going on see as I search to look online and I'm looking for different options, what it looks to me like is they're putting these temporary price adjustments in place and you're seeing them all over the internet. You're seeing them on the phone and they're all over on the app and that's just seems to be the way they're doing it. But as I walk around here, I don't see any big slashes, price hacks, 
price slices. I don't even see any signs at the front of the entrance of the building of the of the building or even of the lot that says, "Oh, you know what? New big truck month." Like I see GMs doing that. You know, truck month, you know, they're they're doing 0% down or offering extra incentives and they're very verbal and vocal about it. They're advertising it. They're showing that yes, we're committing, we're actually committing to these prices. So GM even though the prices are really high, they are in fact showing you some actual incentives and they're giving it they're delivering it firsthand you're actually it's it's there it's on a sign it's in a billboard billboard it's on the internet it's everywhere that tells me that gm is trying to do something i mean it's still pricey but they're trying to do something to move their vehicles and they're showing a little bit of good faith a little bit although they're not cheap so let's not kid ourselves and the same story i find with ford ford doesn't have as much inventory we know ford traditionally is selling the most half ton pickup trucks or light duty trucks of all of the big three. So Ford's not really worried about it. They just seem to sell, although their sales of the ICEs are down this first quarter. So Ford's a little bit struggling right now these days. However, it's their lightnings that really took the hit. So they're actually leaning, bolstering more of their sales on the hybrid vehicles like their Maverick. So Ford's doing okay. They're hanging in there and they have that extra vehicle, that ace in the hole, but their F-150s are down on sales. So are the GMs, the Sierras, and of course, any of the half-ton pickup trucks. But Ram doesn't seem to have that ace in the hole card. They don't seem to have that special vehicle that's gonna pull them out of the water here. But instead, they're just keeping these prices on the, on the internet, which in my mind is very temporary because here today, gone tomorrow. And so that's where I think they're still playing that little bit of yo-yo game. We've seen this through and through in the last year and a half where some of these OEMs are just playing these yo-yos. They're they up in the price, then they down the price, then they up the price. And we've seen this. I mean, even last month, two months ago, prices went up and they even said, advertised their MSRPs are going up for the 25 model year. People got mad. People were ticked off with that. And so then quickly they rebutted and recanted and said, oh no, hang on, we're gonna readjust. And they ended up deciding to make a change and scale it back again. So they feel very much yo-yo. And in my personal opinion, they're playing games and they're trying to get every dollar and it's almost they're following the ebbs and flows and they're doing it in real time, but that's gonna sting. And that's why they're not being as successful in my mind. And you're seeing a lot more inventory out here for pickup trucks than you do with the other big three. Here's an example, the cheapest, dirtiest Ram that you could possibly get your hands on right here. Look, look, this even has just plastic, plastic. You know, it has basic wheels, small 16 inch wheels, has these look very basic, no running boards here. And look, nothing in here either. Very basic and plain Jane. What are we dealing with here? Well, it's a four by four at least and has a little trailer hitch, which that's kind of handy. But in fact, this vehicle is their base model. This is a Ram 1500 classic tradesman quad cab 4x4. Yeah, what is that? That's basically their base model. It actually only has the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine in this one here, but at least it's 4x4. So if you wanna do real truck duty, this might not be your best bet, but it gets you a little pickup truck. However, this truck here, they're listed at $56,000.95. So you're at 57, almost $57,000 for this, you know, this Ram 1500 classic tradesman. And to add to that, it's a 23 model year. That's right, 23 model year. And that's the thing. A lot of Rams, Stellantis, the Jeeps, we're finding a lot of 2023s and even 2022s. Now Ram, they're struggling. They're trying to pull out all the stops, figure out what it's gonna to do to get people in the door. I'll tell you what it's gonna to take to get people in the door. And I see it in the comments all the time. People said, scale it back another 50% and you're good to go. I mean, I know the whole pre, you know, 2019 cars, trucks, SUVs were high and they were escalating, but then they took this big jump and people are not okay with that. So I think what needs to happen is a little bit more aggressive incentives, a little bit more relook at some of the price adjustments and obviously relook at obviously the, the, the entire new lineup for 2025, the Jeeps, you know, whether it's a Compass or Wrangler or whether it's the Rams, they need to relook at the prices on that and they need to make further adjustments. People aren't, people are hungry. They don't have the money these days. I mean, people are just trying to eat. It's the whole cost of living crisis that's getting, getting out of control right now. I mean, look at these trucks. There's no shortage of trucks here to choose from and you could pretty much pick any color, make, model, size, you name it, they've got it. But that's just it. That's the problem and that's truly what I truly believe why Ram is leading the charge to this truck crisis in the fact because they're not necessarily following the same set of rules from my perspective anyhow and they're actually just playing these games and they're 
more or less just following the ebbs and the flows of the market, adjusting as needed, but they're not necessarily saying, look, no, we're committing. I don't see signage. Like I said, I don't even see signs anywhere that says there's truck sales. When I go over to GM, I do see that. Now, that doesn't instill good faith, good trust. I don't have, um, I don't have a lot of faith in that personally. And so I think a lot of buyers are in the same boat. So I just want to share with this with you my perspective. I think what's going on with Ram, I think is not good in my opinion, because they're not really sticking to their guns. They're not playing the game that everybody's willing to play. And that's let's seriously, seriously relook at the pricing on these vehicles because they were far higher than most people can tolerate right now. Yes. Maybe they're trying to cater to that top 1%. I don't know. But if that's what it is, well, they'll get their luck. But you know what? At the end of the day, they're not going to sell enough vehicles if they can't move the products, even with good margins, which they've been focusing on, by the way, are vehicles with bigger margins, fully loaded features, bigger engine configurations. Those are the vehicles that they've been more gravitating to selling. And they've been trying to pitch away all their smaller, junkier vehicles. Because, and a lot of manufacturers are doing that because the margins aren't there and they have to sell a lot more vehicles. So this is what's happening right now ram is leading the charge in terms of you know playing different games in my mind they really need to think about their pricing and get that adjusted accordingly with all of that said be sure to check out right there what we're talking about is gm's issue issue of course with their pickup truck crisis it's real they have their own set of issues so hope to see each and every one in the next one see you then bye bye